button. I got that button. I got to press this button. And then I got to press this button. And we go there. And we do this one. 60, 59, 58. This is a countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 55, 54. This continues to be. This means we're starting, by the way. Slade and Mason show. 50, You're listening to the countdown. Oh, is that the new term? 43. This is the continued 42, countdown. 41, to the Slade and Mason 40, show. 39, 38. Right now. 37. You're listening 36, to the countdown. 35. To the Slade and Mason show. 33. Please stand 32, by me as you are listening to the countdown. 30, to the Slade 29, and Mason show. 28, 27. This 26, is, of course, the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 23. 22. We continue now with the countdown 20, to the Slade 19, and Mason show. 18. 17, stand by 16, as we are 15, now delivering the countdown 14, to the Slade 13, and Mason show. 12, 11, yes, 10, this is our countdown 9, to the Slade 8, and Mason 7, show. 6, 5, ready? 4, here we go. 3, 2, 1. Now broadcasting from the Dan Mason Studios, deep in the heart of Virginia, it's the Slade and Mason Show. <laughs> I haven't said anything yet, he's already laughing, man. <laughs> That's talent. Da -da. Da -da. I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And, and this, this is the Slade and Mason, Mason Show. Good morning, Mr. Mason. Good morning, Mr. Slade. This is the Dan Mason and Slade Mason Show. Da -da. All right, I'm back. I, I, right. I checked out for just a little bit. Good morning, Mr. Slade. Good morning, Mr. Mason. The caramel macchiato is delicious this morning. And I have, I have treats with me all the time, so... You know and, what time of year this is, don't and, you? Yes, it's and, and, how's, and my my mm, my home roasted coffee is good too. <clears throat> yes, I know what season it is, but we'll get to that in just a minute. The Slade and Mason Show is all about you and us. It's like a radio program where we share with you news stories and things that we see throughout the week. It's you know, in other words, you're a captive audience. If you're listening, this is what you're going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know what? This is this is really just our take on it. Basically, we're saying the things that creep into your brain cells, but you would never hear on the radio. You'd never hear yourself say it out loud, but you're, maybe when you're driving to work and you go, <laughs> yeah, but no, we're just basically having fun. Don't take it too seriously. Just enjoy all the mucus. Mus all the mucus is brought to you by all the mucus, all the music, the music, the stuff you hear that's in pattern tones is brought to you by Dano Music. Dano Music, because we're too cheap. Don't forget to check out our Instagram page where we have that one picture from 2016. Uh, it's the Slade and Mason M A Y Y, because we love you. S O N show. All right, yeah, don't forget to tell your friend. When you did that, <laughs> <laughs> I burned his mouth. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends, neighbors, cops, local people you see in the street. Tell them you listen to the Slade and Mason show. I remember we're also I mean, on. You won't get arrested. Yeah, you won't. Well, in in the United States anyway. So you can. Uh, I don't know about that guy in Turkey though. Careful, dude. Ah. Uh, so also we are on YouTube. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We said good morning to him. Uh, we're on YouTube. You know that you remember that we're on YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're on oh, YouTube yeah. and OLFW.com, which is probably where you, uh, maybe landed. Or if you're catching us at anchor.fm, we're on Spotify. We're on all the channels except one. That Apple radio. Yeah. That I Apple. don't know what Apple did to us. They bumped us off. So you have to, you have to find us. <laughs> we're like a pilot radio station yeah you have been really creepy today it's like i before we went on the air it's like uh i i don't know man are you sure there aren't some wanted posters for you somewhere yeah 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 i'm okay i'm okay okay i'm okay hey you got your morning rant what's going on hey how you doing what's going on hey 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 okay a couple of things these are and these are not necessarily rants but they're and by the way we're brought to you by i see i see something nice we'll get to that later go ahead 
Uh, well, okay. it's like, why don't you go ahead and talk about I See Something Icy? Because I, 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 I'm I, sorry. I'm so tempted by this. So uh, I'll be with you in just a second. We will be brought to you by I See Something Icy. Look, I know what time it is. It's February 16th. It's freaking cold outside. Took the dog for a walk. Didn't want to go for a walk. I said, look, we got to go for a walk. She said, I don't want to go for a walk. It's cold outside. I said, look, you're not going to go in the bathroom inside the house. You're going to go to the bathroom outside the house. So dog said, took the I'll dog, out, took her outside, and it was a cold walk. But the important thing to remember is it is warming up, and my buddy Sheila is starting to get calls. So we'll talk about how to contact uh, my buddy at I See Something I See a little bit later. And remember, spring is right around the corner. You're going to want to have these tasty treats. All right, what do you got, J.D.? Okay, do you know what time of year this is? It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's because it's Girl Scout cookie time. Oh, yeah, I've already ordered mine. I Listen, I, oh, you are way behind. <laughs> See, of course, on, on my radio show, mm -hmm. I happen to have a link with a Girl Scout cookie leader who gets to me as soon as they get ready to start talking about it. <laughs> and I, uh, I have, a, I've already, I had to, when she brought on the show, mm -hmm. uh, before they were even available for sale, Wow. She brought me the lemon up cookie. Ooh, how are those? Oh, is that delicious? <laughs> That's what I'm having this morning. It and besides it being a delicious cookie, every cookie has uh, has a, a positive message. The one I have uh, in my hand right now says, "I am my innovator." The That's other one good. says, "I am a go getter." I am bold. So, you know, again, positive message, great cookie. Again, the Girl Scouts have really, really racked it up this year. Um, so congratulations. And if you're going to order, at least try one pack of Lemon Up cookies. You will not be sorry. One per hour. Right. And that way, yeah, sure. <laughs> you'll get your daily allowance of everything. Okay. That's right. Exactly. All right. Now. All right. <clears throat> Morning I'm, rant. I'm Go ahead. You know, you're, you're hearing all these stories about the coronavirus all over the world. I think uh, as a point of this morning, some 50,000 people have been affected by the virus, and there have been like a 1,000 deaths and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So Monday, I finished my work, and I decided to go to a local store and decided to have a, um, well, a snack. I got a couple of hot dogs and a cup of fries. Mm-hmm. I don't want to really name the business because I don't want to necessarily accuse them. But so it's like I had my hot dogs and my fries when I got home and I went to bed. Well, not right away. I, it was a little later. Mm. Next morning when I got up, man, it was not good. It was not good at all. It's like I oh. had a hard time putting it, pulling it together. Hmm. And, you know, and I'm thinking, boy, I really feel like I have to throw up. And so I made yeah. myself do that. Yeah. And, and then I got in the shower. I got myself together. And I was really feeling rough, man. I went into the station. And I got ready to start doing my prep stuff. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, when you get those overactive saliva glands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then the back corners of your throat just kind of go. Yeah, and you know, like I say, it, if you sit there, you're going to pay for it. But if you stand, you don't know if you're going to make it. <laughs> well, that was to me in the race down the hall. Oh, God. I got into really, and you know how you are familiar with how the station is, uh, is, is faction. So it's like you open the door, and you got probably – 10 feet before you get to the commode. It's a little zigzag. Yes. And so I, uh, I mean, I get into the door, I run and I get there just in time to lift the thing and boom. La, 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 la. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I am, I am operating. Ball, ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, Believe it or not, now this is at 4.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I still got to finish my work and get myself together to do a morning radio show. That's correct. Whoa, boy. 
Mm -hmm. I deserve the Academy Award. To heck with 1917, to heck with Joaquin Phoenix. I deserve the Academy Award because I actually pulled that off. And here's how I was doing it. I would start a break and I would blah, 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 back in a minute. Hit the mic. In the trash can. Yep. Oh, man. This went on all morning long. I mean... I had dry heaves and I couldn't put even a cracker in there. It's like, I'm like <laughs> friends, where else are you going to hear about people dry heaving on the radio? I mean, now, where else but on the Slade and Mason show? <laughs> but this is to show you that mm-hmm. again, we are, we really are, we are the the the, the uh, uh, masters of smoke and mirrors because yeah. not one person could tell. That I was sick as a dog. Well, I think the more important uh, issue is how we are interdependent upon outside purveyors of food. Yes. And yes. if you make one teeny tiny little mistake, dude, let me tell you, 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 you know, you're uh, you get the rainbow yawn for a day. And that's so, not good. But, you know, again, it, when I when it first happened, it, it, it scared me because of all this coronavirus. And of course I'm reporting on this every day Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, Oh no, I've got the, (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to (laughs) die. Well, Okay. So I, I go home. I mean, I actually finish my shift. I get all my other work done and it's like by 1130, I'm telling bank tells I'm going home, man. That's it. I'm done. So I go home and it's like, (laughs) <laughs> all right now i'm gonna get descriptive if you're sensitive just uh here's a spoiler alert look Three, away for the next minute two one i get home and man it's like i want to i've got to get out of everything you know i mean it's like you know my clothes are just feeling awful so it's like and of course i have you know i have this artificial limb mm-hmm. so, i i mean i am so ill that all i did when i got home was pull my pants down, take my, my, my left shoe off, left my pants connected to the leg, left the leg laying out on the floor. <laughs> I got a visual. <laughs> All right. So I go and I crawl into bed, man. It's like, you know, I am weak. Now I'm starting to have other thoughts because the last time I was sick like this, it was the day before I went in the hospital years ago. Oh, which we talked so- about last week. Yeah, well, so, you know, so like I say, I got these thoughts rambling in my head, but I'm thinking, no, but I'm feeling pretty good. Otherwise, it's like I haven't pushed myself. I don't have any. (laughs) Then I nod off to sleep. Good. And then you wake up. I wake up about 3.30 because I know Boogie is going to come over because we're going to probably, usually we examine car parts every afternoon. That's awfully nice of you guys. And Just to make make sure. sure Everything is safe for you to travel. And so... (laughs) Now, here's how bad it was. Here is how bad, at least sick, I was, Dan. Mm -hmm. You know me. I did not check any car parts out that entire day. Wow. Boogie Boogie came by, and he said, well, it's like, uh, you know, do you want to look at these car parts? I said, man, no, you go ahead. He said, okay, I'll check these car parts on myself. Wow. That's, That's how sick I was. Wow. So it's like, you know, I, I thought, you know, um, ginger is good for upset tummy. So it's like I had some ginger ale in the house. So it's like I, I pumped in a lot of ginger ale. Yep. Just for one for to make to, to, to quench my thirst. Second, to make sure I had something in my stomach. So if I had to regurgitate, something would come up. And uh, oh, man. But amazingly enough, it's like Boogie stayed. And do you know? <laughs> You know, I love Boogie like a brother, but it's like, you know, there sometimes we're just really so just out of it that you just, somebody else's voice just fingers like fingers on a blackboard, <laughs> fingers on a blackboard. In other words, he, you were he, not, he you were not one for company that day. <laughs> I was not one for company because he was talking about something and all I was thinking in my head was shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. 
go home. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did at any point did he say, what did you just say to me? <laughs> no, but okay, but Boogie is one of these, like I say, I tell these, people wonder where I get all my material from. It's my life. <laughs> Boogie is one of these who, okay, it's uh, 3.30 right now, and he'll say, well, I guess I ought to be getting up, get going. <laughs> Ten minutes later, <laughs> well, I guess I ought to be getting up and get going. <laughs> I guess I ought to be out. <laughs> Ten minutes later, <laughs> I guess I ought to be getting up and get going. Then he'll start moving. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that, he'll get up. <laughs> then he'll get to the door. Is he not open, part parrot, maybe? Open the door. Uh-huh. Look outside the door. Open the screen door. Look outside that. Close it. Turn around and go, well, I guess I'll be going now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, so I go through Tuesday, and like I say, I think I have pinpointed the culprit because I just happen to like these fries that come out of this place, but unfortunately, they're greasy. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, on Wednesday morning, I get up and I go, I, I really do. I say a prayer. Please, please let me be able to feel a little better today. Because, like I say, I have nothing in my guts. It's like, you know, it's it, everything is empty. You know, I hear bong when I tap my stomach. Yeah. I get up, and I'm like, okay, so far, so good. You know, because, you know, when you're just over being ill, you know, you got that slight chance you might relapse. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like rolling my chair really carefully, and I'm <laughs> walking very gingerly as I'm Feeling like, my way into the bathroom. Like you're holding a bowl of jelly in your stomach or something, right? Yeah. Just make sure it doesn't like go roll over. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden it comes out like Play-Doh being squished out of one of those toy things that they make for Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and then I had an interview on Thursday. So it's like I really did not want to be sick. When you I get the not- job. <laughs> Well, okay, so now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you my surprise because uh, in this interview with this newspaper, mm-hmm. I happened to mention the Slade and Mason show. Uh oh. <laughs> so that, you know, again, to try and drum up some business because like I say, uh how many cups have we sold? Uh so far, uh let me take a look here. <laughs> Grimley's, uh, you know, Grimley's, uh, cups. <clears throat> Let's see. I keep trying to sexualize the hoodie thing, man. It's like, yeah, it's like today I said, well, you know, again, I like my big old shirts and uh, my big old shirts look good on, on the women that visit me because they're not as big as me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's go oh, to well, analytics. Me... Hold on. I'm getting logged in. Analytics, we have sold. Mm. Go to orders. Mm. Go to listings. Mm. Got to go to Harvard to figure these out. It is, it is, it is absolutely identical to last month. Yeah, that's how well we're doing. All right. Anyway, um, well, I'm glad you're here. Me too. I'm glad you made it. It's a beautiful thing because you know, worse things can happen. You know, for instance, lemon cookies are good. You know, so uh, for instance, we were talking about Plato. Um, did you know? If you're a small dog and <laughs> you find the colored pencils that a child left on the counter, on the, on the ledge that your nose can reach. And if you eat all of the green colored pencil, less the metal cap at the, at the, at the tail end, that some several hours later, that when you go for a walk with your 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 owner, <laughs> you will defecate a green poo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, green like wow. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, friends, it's really important that you put away. Your colored pencils when your dog is around. 
That's even better than tinsel poo. <laughs> <laughs> tinsel poo is awful. <laughs> Because no, it's it's the, it's the gift that keeps on going and go- <laughs> oh my gosh! It, it, like when you've got your little plastic poopy scooper, you're <laughs> picking up. It's almost like getting little Christmas presents. <laughs> it's like having two leashes on the dog. You got one on the front end, one on the back end. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh. All right, doing bathroom jokes. You clown the show too. Uh, All right, we I, got rock. Uh, one more point. All right, go ahead. So yesterday, which would have been Saturday. We, yeah, it would. Party. It would be, and it is, actually. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, man. Oh. All right. Uh, Saturday, you know, we have our weekly schedule, weekend schedules posted months in advance because, well, there's only two of us working weekends. <laughs> Flip a coin. So, all right. So yesterday, I usually come in on Saturday because I have things that I need to get done to get ready for Monday shows. So I get them done early, and if I don't have to work on the air, then I can go home by, like, 8.30 and be done until Monday mm-hmm. or until Sunday when we do the Slade Mason show. So yesterday, I don't know what I was thinking. I came in, started getting my stuff done. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, I'm recording all the weather forecast for through the weekend. And then I'm thinking, hmm. So I go ahead and voice track from 12 to 2 because that's when I sneak out of here. And, and I, I mean, I'm getting all this stuff done. And by eight, nine, I guess it was nine 15, everything was done. So I'm sitting here in the studio looking at something and bank tells calls. Mm. And he says, Hey, can you, uh, can you put in bumpers for the, uh, 20 break, you know, more country next, uh, back to the country, something like that. I said, why? He said, well, because I'm going to be a little late. Mm. Mm. Have you figured out the key to this mystery? Mm. Mm. The key to this mystery is is that I, I wasn't supposed to work yesterday. Yeah. But, like, I've got it in my workaholic nature, and that is what I have become, a workaholic. My workaholic nature that if I'm in the studio, I need to get lots of things done whether it's my turn to do them or not. And what have we learned, Dorothy? Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this, this is the Slade and Mason Show. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we can't be doing that anymore. We can't be doing that. So, um, okay, okay. Zero transition. What? Zero transition. Oh, no. No, oh, no, you yeah. can't do zero transition. You got to Well, actually, this cookie is Okay, talk. workaholic. <clears throat> so, you remember Sam Donaldson? Yes. That guy worked like crazy. That was NBC. Yeah. Um, apparently he did a rare appearance on uh, uh CNN show with Anderson Cooper the other day. Did you hear about this? No. He made an endorsement. He says, "Look, I never financially or orally support any candidate ever." A middle of the road, just tell you the news. That's the end of it. But he says, I am standing 100% behind Mike Bloomberg because he felt he was the best suited for the Democratic nomination. So he'll be able to fix things and keep things on the hill, quote unquote, like the shining city and the envy of the world that Ronald Reagan set up. Now, my biggest mystery behind this whole thing is I didn't know that I I was unaware that Sam Donaldson was still alive. Do you know? Do you know I the man's eighty five years old? I did know that he was alive. He's wow. just retired. Do you know he he retired in ninety nine, and divorced like a like in two thousand fourteen. I bet his wife was sitting there sick and tired of going yelling at the TV. We don't know what you're talking about. Well, it was a newscast. You're hated. She's like, I've, I've had enough of this. She, she's been hanging him with eight, since 1984, and she finally decides, yeah, Sam, I'm, um, this is this has got to go. So apparently, uh, he he de- he immediately, boom, 2013 separated, boom, 2014 divorced, boom, 2014 got remarried again with some new chick, and wow. she must not look. Uh, she must be really good for the radio because there are no pictures of her. <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> she must be a radio host somewhere. Uh, in any event. <laughs> they made for radio. <laughs> well, he's got a face now that looks great for radio because, whoo. Yeah, but here's the thing about Sam Donaldson. It's mm. like, because, yeah, he was he was a uh, really curmudgeon, man. It's like, this is the way it should be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm like, okay, but I could stand him. I, I liked him as a, you know, as a confrontational journalist, just like I liked Mike Wallace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and I like his son Chris too. Yeah, I, I think it's just, I think it's just, um, um, it, it, maybe it's just, it's just like old man disease or something. They get a little <laughs> bit of that going on there, but man, I mean, just and then and then comparing the shining sea of like the Reagan administration, I'm like uh, Reagan was a Republican, you're talking Democrat. What do you what? What? Yeah, now, but let me just tell you, it's like uh, there, there are people who are, and we're not going political on you, gang. We're just, we're just the pointing stuff out. The day they die, are going to feel that we never had a better time than when Ronnie Reagan was president. Yeah. Now you know, again, we we tend to gloss over things like Iran Contra. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Don't forget that ridiculous war on drugs that he tried to force you with carrying on the Nixonian tradition. Remember, Nancy, just time. say no. That's right. Just, just say, say no, no, Nancy. Yes. And how many times did you just say no? Yes, yes, yes. What uh, but, you know, but like I say, this Mike Bloomberg thing, you know, I was talking with Junior Wright. I don't want to get political on this, but I'll no. tell you what. Yeah. He's making a lot of noise. But that, you know, that, that good point. I, I want to bring that to your, everybody's attention. Here's what I get, because you know I, I I like looking at you know videos about learning how to cook unique dishes and maybe I'll learn about some new microwave. Care. Yeah, whatever, repair, repairing stuff. But I kid you not, I see these Mike Bloomberg commercials, and my finger is hovering over the skip ad button, going five, four, three. Two, one, skip. Because they're 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 so dry, they're so overly produced, they're so like I, I think they're going for the lowest common. Oh dear, mm. so presidential. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to make him out to be uh, God. All right. Well, okay. And here's the um, you gotta. He's gonna have to face the music on this one because mm-hmm. he was the mayor. Mm-hmm. The biggest city in the country mm-hmm. with this stupid stop and frisk law. Yeah, we were. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, people were uh, reminded. And, and being being with cultural differences from you, I would have been a victim much more often than you could have ever imagined. I don't know. I think that spot on my arm starting to expand. Uh, uh. No, that's cancer. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Could be worse. All right. Well, let's do this. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back. Goodness for this break. Sadly, however, we will return to the Slade and Mason show. Today in history, February 16th. 1852. The Studebaker Brothers Wagon Company is formed. This is the precursor to the American automobile manufacturer, also by the same name of Studebaker. What are the odds of that? Finally petering out in 1966, thinking that whole car thing was a fad. 1937. Wallace H. Carruthers receives a U.S. patent for nylon. First commercially used for nylon bristled toothbrushes in 1938, followed up by nylon stockings, yeah, for women, and famed as the fabric of the future, the 1939 New York World's Fair. And yes, for those of you who are wondering, it is a synthetic polymer made from polyamides. But you probably already knew that. 1978. The first computer bulletin board system was created in Chicago, Illinois. The very first message was listed as... Curb alert, two dressers and a stool available at 123 Main Street. Come pick up before noon or they will go to the trash. And finally, 1968, 
Helleyville, Alabama, the very first 911 emergency system goes into service, sending millions scrambling looking for a phone going to 11. I'm Dan Mason, and that's February 16th. And now, just a few minutes with Andy on this national holiday. Well, it's that time of year again. Shows up pretty regular now. Didn't even know it existed. No, not talking about Valentine's Day. Got past that. Yes, I got my wife some flowers. You don't see me sleeping in disheveled clothes. Uh, in the shape of a sofa, anyway. No, I'm talking about a new holiday brought to you by... I guess the good people of Hallmark. We're talking about do a grouch a favor day. You know, be nice to someone grouchy. Didn't know it was a real thing till a couple of years ago. Started to get cards and letters from friends and family. Here's one today. It says, hope you have a nice day. That's from Maury. Thanks, Maury. Got this one from a viewer. It says here, Hope you have a nice day, Grouch. Not very nice. Put that one away. At least it's straight to the point. The sun's different. Got this from the editing crew. Says, get well soon. Not very nice. Now you can call me a Grouch if you like. I don't think it's an appropriate term. I don't think you need to do me a favor even though it's do a grouch a favor day. No, I think it's just me recognizing that we live in a planet with a bunch of people who don't really realize that there are other people on this planet, and we need to be aware of that. A great example is when you go to the grocery store. Now, I know if you're 98 years old and you have to go through those double doors and you're a little overwhelmed by the lights and all the advertisements, and you're just trying to get to where the cheese is, remember, it's at the back of the store. So don't stop your cart here. Keep on going. And speaking of stopping your cart, don't put your cart in the middle of the aisle and turn it perpendicular just because you don't want someone touching your purse. It's not nice. It's not appreciated. Don't do it. My biggest problem with grocery stores is they don't let me go near the milk. They think I'm going to turn it sour or something. No, I don't particularly enjoy this national holiday of do a grouch a favor day. In fact, I don't think I like the word grouch. I prefer the word curmudgeon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go hop back into my garbage can and put my lid on. That was Andy Rooney. We'll see you next week. All right, all right, all right. Sheesh, what a grouch. Is your life like my life? Is your wife like my wife? When I came home from work, I opened up the door. I kissed the wife hello and checked the football score. My wife got pretty mad because I was on the wrong floor. Sheesh, what a grouch. Are your friends... Like my friends, I mean, are they real tried friends and true friends? A pal of mine gave me his income tax to mail. He told me, don't forget, and mail it without fail. You should have heard him holler when they took him off the jail. <laughs> what a grouch. I used to work in a laundry. Making shirts look like new ones My grouchy boss got mad So what did I do so bad? The shirts were white, right? Especially the blue ones Is your kid like my kid? I mean, is he a real smart kid? Like my kid This morning we had milk I took an extra glass My kid got mad and said Hey, Pop, step on a gas Then he left for school Without me, and we're in the same class. She put a little grouch. We still belong to the Boy Scouts. Me and my good friend Grover. Oh, ladies, 
that we meet, we help them across the street. Even the ones that don't want to cross over. Is your dad like my dad? I mean, does he get real mad like my dad? When I was born, my dad got mad as he could be. He thought he'd have a child. Instead, my dad had me. He cut a wife goodbye before he walked into the sea. Sheesh, what a grouch. Sheesh, what a grouch. <laughs> Sorry about that, gang. But now we must return you to the Slade and Mason show. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna get. <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see. Hi, I'm JD Slade. I'm Dan Mason, and this is the Slade and Mason show. All right, that was in commemoration of do nice things That's for. <laughs> what? National Grouch Day. No, it's National Be Nice to a Grouchy Person Day. Uh, it's nice to meet you, Dan. It's yeah, like, I just don't know. Just, just shut up. For crying out loud. You're so grouchy. For crying out loud. All right. That, this segment of the Slade Mason Show is brought to you by I See Something I See. You got to call my friend Sheila Keenan. She's at 804-617-8827. Um, for a good time call. For a good time call. Um now you were talking about uh, 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 in the last segment about a uh, food substance that you ate. Uh, she is absolutely fastidious about cleanliness, so that would I, I don't even see it would have to come from like the manufacturer. Where the issue would be um, the icy traits, the the container that wear the gloves all the time. Um, yeah, they're very very clean about things but tell me about this 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 process it, though because it's like it's <clears throat> ice but it doesn't feel like ice it doesn't feel like ice it's the weirdest thing they have these they are italian um ice slicers so you know the italian ice cream that comes out it's a nice and creamy tasting same thing they 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 get first off they get uh extra clear clear ice they get the large cubes they're about uh, 10 20 pounds each they put them on top of the feeder <clears throat> and it's it's uh there's a screw at the top and it continuously pushes down on the ice and it shreds it into this fine, fine powder. And it goes into the cup and then they add the, the flavorings on top. They also put gummy worms on for kids and things like that. Uh, Sour Patch. And it's it's actually a pretty neat deal. People go gaga over it. Um, lots of great flavors. Good for birthday parties. If you have any corporate events, we've used them several times. We're that place I work at. Uh, fundraisers, they do that as well. Church socials. So give them a call, 804-617-8827. I already know uh, pretty much March is booked up already, believe it or not. I know we're we're still, you know, in, in freezing cold weather. But, yeah, she's got some yeah, time already booked up. You see, again, people who are in the business, they, they gender, generally plan ahead. So it's like, you know, again, she's not looking at – she's already looking at April, May, and June. Oh, yeah. it's a, it, she's Yeah, so you guys got to move on this. If you have an event coming up, this is this is the time, and she's here in the you know the Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania, Stafford area. So uh, I don't know if she goes as far as she might not go as far as Orange. She, she actually has gone as far as Orange. So they have a truck. Right. So if the money's right, yeah, she'll do it. <laughs> yeah. So 804-617-8827, 804-617-8827. They are at www.icey. I see. I see something. I see. So it's I C E Y, and then something S O M. E T H I N, leave the G off for goodness sakes. I C E Y dot com. And they are on uh, Facebook and Instagram. We're on Instagram too, but we still have that picture from 2016. <laughs> so give Sheila a call, 804 617 8827. And uh, <laughs> what a grouch. <laughs> Art Carney. That was great. That was, of course, Art Carney uh, with Wolf Comac and Sid. Feller band, I guess. Um, with sheesh, what a grouch. Um, yeah, we're gonna get dinged for that one. I would imagine since uh, <laughs> Mark Carney, that was that was cute. That was a cute little uh, little ding dong. And of course, Andy Rooney, as always, great to hear him. Hey, you, oh, you just dropping out on me, man. You just dropped out. All right, what would you want to say about what? All right, so <clears throat> you know, I I do not understand. <clears throat> 
Do you remember somebody had the experiment that they bought like a Big Mac and it's like, and they put it on a shelf and it's like, and they kept it for like 29 years or something like that? Yeah, they got a, well, just a regular cheese sandwich, but yes. All right. <clears throat> There's a, Matt Naden of South Yorkshire, England, bought a Big Mac meal in November 2018 before burying it in his friend's garden in Tupperware. Matt and his friend recently dug up the Big Mac meal before he ate the soggy sandwich. His fries were dried out and had mold in the middle, and the milkshake was lumpy. Uh, ate it? Uh, uh, two-year-old? Uh, uh, I mean, you know, oh, man. Why did you share that story with me? I wanted you to know just how silly, how stupid. I mean, why? Would, why? Uh, why? McDonald's is not going to want to acknowledge that you ate a two-year-old sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That's so disgusting. We do some very <laughs> gross things. I mean, you got to think about this one. You know, you, you got... <laughs> <laughs> you know, here you are. You're crossing the desert with your friend. You know, you you look across and you go, "Hey, Gary, how you doing?" Oh, I'm a little thirsty though. Well, why don't we drink some of that milk we have in the pig bladder? Okay. Um, hey, Gary. Yeah, it's uh, it's gotten a little lumpy. Oh. Well, go ahead and <laughs> smells bad too. Give it a sip. Oh, well, it's kind of kind of chewy now. Hey, you know what? I kind of like that chewiness. Oh, you know what we should do? What's that, Gary? We should take some of that disgusting, lumpy milk. And you know what? We'll press out all the clear part, the yellowy stuff that looks like it's, well, rat urine. And then we'll kind of <laughs> take the lumpy parts and we'll squish them together. What are we going to do with them then? Well, let's let them sit on a shelf for, oh... Six to nine months. <laughs> then what we'll do is slice it up and put it on some crackers and eat it. <laughs> Gary, that's got to be one of the best ideas I've heard yet. I can't wait to get off this camel and try that. <laughs> and so, in history, was born cheese. <laughs> and we've been messing with it ever <laughs> since. <laughs> You know, just hearing the first part of that story brought up a horrible memory for me. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to bring up a horrible memory for you. <laughs> you. I consider you to be one of the most frugal people I know yes. next to me. <laughs> but neither one of us is as frugal as my mom was. Oh, my mom was pretty frugal, too. Go ahead. Well, it's like, here's the thing. You know, the, the, there's a freshness date on milk for a reason. <laughs> Look, when, uh, and when it, when when the freshness date is like ten days past, well, uh, then you, are, you really shouldn't be drinking that milk. Well, that's when you, you open up the flap and you give it a quick sniff and you look for green or pink around the edges. No, it's like <laughs> no, because here's the way my mom would fix me. Mm. I would come to the table and my cereal and milk were already poured. <laughs> Now, Mom, just, did you did you put vinegar in my glass? Hey, just remember, just yeah. remember now, as a Ute, mm. I was a little fat kid. Oh, yes. You got so, let down. Hey, I'm coming in scarfing, man. <laughs> like, your your spoon is swinging before you hit the ball, right? <laughs> you got that oh, little turbo. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's like in a good meal, man, I'm making sparks fly. <laughs> Anyway, that first that first spoonful of milk and sour milk. Oh ah. man! Oh man! What was that? Yeah, what was that movie uh, uh, with Burt Reynolds and Don DeLuise? And Burt Reynolds was trying to commit suicide, and he couldn't do it. And he finally got Don DeLuise's help to help him commit. He was going to murder him, but there was the one scene where Burt Reynolds 
finds a whole, you know, big, huge bottle of amphetamines or something like that. And he, he pours them in his hand. He pops the whole thing down. He runs over to the refrigerator, pours himself a glass, and he takes a big chug of sour milk. And he goes, oh, phew, and he spits them all out. <laughs> and he's, like, scraping the amphetamines. And can he get the milk off of it? It's like, oh, my gosh. You know, it and, was and, bad. And it was really, I really bad. Oh, you mom, know, they're both dead, by the way. You know. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I would say to my mom, the milk is sour. Ain't nothing wrong with that milk, boy. <laughs> and just put more sugar on it. <laughs> you oh, ever heard of General Sal's cereal? <laughs> oh, man. And, and, and then if you do get one of those where you can pour it out and you hear, <laughs> Oh, 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 or you're, you're pouring into like, well, it looks kind of thin. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that has separated. And and the notion of just reaching in and going, let me tell you some of this hard stuff here. Oh, no. <laughs> so, but that's, that's where cheese came from. Well, for those of you who are now still listening uh, and you have the <laughs> trash can right next to you. What oh repulsive thing can we come up with now? Oh, my gosh. Hey, uh, there's a story in the news. I don't know if you saw this about a husband who, for Valentine's Day, surprised his wife with a reenactment of the airport proposal that he did from 25 years ago. Have you seen it? No. Yeah. Um, I think she was smarter this time. She said no. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are a cruel society because I tell you, every time I ever see one of these guys who decides he's going to get up on the big, big picture Tron. Oh, the jumbotron. And, <laughs> and you just want her to say, no. Oh, I've seen those before where she's like, no. Shaking her head. No, I'm not, I'm not doing, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, right there. And you can see, you can actually see when this guy's heart gets crushed because his face just goes into this instant. I, what? Now he has no idea what to do. How do you recover? It's not like when you know when you trip and you try to make it look like you meant to do it. <laughs> and, uh, nope. This is like thousands of people, and if it's the right moment. Millions of people online are going to get to see this <laughs> tremendous fail. <laughs> I don't know, people. I don't know, people. And yeah, and then and then then you get the then you get the problem of the you know it, what if she does say yes, and then you're stuck. Yeah, then you get the bridezilla, and then the next thing you know, you get the kids. And speaking, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I just happen to be looking on my notes here. Yes, uh, better bridezilla. Uh, you know the notes that I very rarely follow. Uh, Hey, listen. How was uh, how was your um, um, th- uh, Friday? Oh, it was great. I donated a pint of blood. I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, uh, any yeah. anything else go on? You know anything uh, that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so uh, what I did was for work. Um, I got some um, tortilla rounds, some flour tortilla rounds, and I cut them into six pieces. And then I got some butter, and I got them, and I fried them all up. <clears throat> and then I took some cinnamon sugar, and I kind of coated them all with the cinnamon sugar and then i got um a container of um a sour not sour cream what's the other uh cut, cut cream cheese cream cheese and brought that down to room temperature i blended that up with a little bit of sugar and a little bit of uh, sour cream and then i put some fresh raspberries in fresh raspberries and then i took that and i put it in the dish so it gave it a nice pink hue nothing to do with the season but a nice pink hue to it brought that to work i also made some banana bread brought that in as well um let's see what else friday um was a little bit woozy from the donating blood so you know uh had a, a sip of beer and i went right to sleep you know but, uh, <laughs> that's what happened there yeah um it's about all i got uh, all right all right well okay what before, about you anything interesting happened that day before i get into that i also want to congratulate you know i started the program out talking about the girl scout lemon up cookies mm-hmm. And I want to congratulate the Girl Scouts of America because they are industrious. They have decided it's like I just started a couple of years ago and it has grown leaps and bounds. And the reason is because cannabis is becoming so legal everywhere 
the Girl Scouts have decided that there are two spots that they need to make sure that they always have someone parked at. <laughs> one is the dispensaries. Yeah. The other one are health and fitness joints. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, man, I mean, I, I, I want to give the girl who came up with the idea of going to a dispensary, they have to have a special medal for her because that's brilliant. Uh, Absolutely yes. brilliant. There's nothing like after you come out of the dispensary and all of a sudden you've got, the, oh, this in left hand and, oh, yeah, I got to make sure I take care of that. Yeah, I'll take uh, the lemon ups and I'll take the Samoas and I'll take the Thin Mints and, uh, yeah. And get me three more boxes of those thin mints because I want to get my breath to taste really nice and minty. Yeah. All right. Now, the reason I asked the question is because you seem to have forgotten the elephant in the room on Friday. What was that? What something elephant? What? Tell me about an elephant. Yeah. Friday happened to be Valentine's Day. Never heard of it. I'll bet you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> See, there are those, there are some of us in the male species who have been burnt to a crisp <laughs> by, by their amorous adventures. <laughs> oh, yes. There are some of us survivalists who are like, okay, so I got kicked in the teeth this time. I, you know, I man, remember I, next year. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, so, so this year I, I decided I'm not, I wasn't looking for a Valentine per se, but Listen, I happen to have a very large audience. So it's like, they're not good if I want money, but when I want love, I just say, listen, I need you to show me some love and they'll post things and they'll call me and tell me they love me. And then I, then I'm, I'm fine. This way I didn't have to spend any money for dinner as our flowers or candy. Well, I did buy candy, but I like candy. And <laughs> don't, don't have to talk to her in the morning. <laughs> I, you know, it's like I don't have to. I, well, I, it's a very, very selfish way to look at it. And I'm yeah. sorry if, I, if this comes across this way, but, but being to my lonesome, I have some of the most intelligent conversations I could ever have. <laughs> I, I, I have the best meals cooked. By the best chef I know. Yes. Uh, Chez Mergenius. <laughs> yes. Um, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, wait, wait, but, but wait, wait, wait. You just, you just pointed out that you had food that was tainted by a local constabulary. <clears throat> yes, but see, again, like I say, that's not what I had on Valentine's Day. Okay, all right. Because by then, now I have gotten over this, remember? Mm, all right. Pay attention. I'm listening. Yeah. I just want to point out. So, so the, the bottom line is, well, then they go, well, Slade, don't, you know, don't you miss the, you know, you know, and I say, well, not really, because, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm a very intelligent man. I can enjoy my own company. Mm -hmm. I can have diversity left or right. Mm -hmm. And when it's all over and done with, it's like I ain't got to talk to it. I ain't got to cuddle with it. All I got to do is wash my hands and go to bed. <laughs> so glad you're not candy coating this. <laughs> hey, uh, sharing is caring, Dan. Yeah, great. <laughs> so anyway, so I was talking about Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. So the, listen to some of this ridiculous crap. All right. So this woman and her fiance, they are not talking. Because what did this idiot buy her for Valentine's Day? It doesn't matter. It wasn't what she wanted. <clears throat> and therefore, well, go ahead, really a vacuum cleaner. It was, it was a Peloton bike. <laughs> now, this, well, we that's just, because those ads we talked about. Remember we talked about this about yeah. uh, how many months ago? Six yeah. months ago. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Before Christmas, long before Christmas. Yep. And this idiot bought her a Peloton bike. For Valentine's Day. Now, listen. I, I, there's a difference between things like that on one extreme and the thing that, uh, I guess it's, uh, Gaucho Dubai, uh, Argentinian steakhouse. <laughs> Listen to this. They offered a $68,000 Valentine's day package. Mm -hmm. The diamond dining package included a chauffeur driven ride to the restaurant in a Bentley, a seven course meal, rare vintage wine, 300 red roses, champagne. Now, wait a minute. If we're having a rare vintage wine, why is champagne necessary? Got to get drunk. <laughs> Engraved steak knives, mm -hmm. a one-and-a-half-carat diamond engagement ring from Tiffany & Company, 
and matching tits. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> oh, <that's> the... <laughs> matching mm. his and her tips watch. of what? <laughs> matching his and her Rolex watches. All How right, much? Now, Hold on a second. That way, okay. You got matching his and her Rolex watches. Mm. You got the one and a half carat diamond engagement ring. Mm-hmm. The uh, engraved steak knives, the champagne. All right, so you're actually paying sixty-eight thousand dollars so that you can get a nineteen ninety-nine meal because it's uh, the, the chauffeur-driven limousine. I drive myself. <laughs> then, you know, then it's a seven-course meal. Now, first off, what are you going to serve me in seven courses? I don't know. I don't. Know. You're the cook. Come on. Uh, a, sp- a six pack and a boiled potato. Boom, boom, <laughs> that's, oh that's an Irish seven course meal. I tell you that. Yeah. All <laughs> right. So again, uh, uh, you know, every week I, I, I take and I toil to make sure that I, I find out why we are the fattest nation in the world. And it's almost time to do it. You only got three minutes left. All right, Chaboom says pizza Hut selling heart-shaped pizza for Valentine's Day. Their Valentine's Day desserts includes a Hershey's triple chocolate brownie and an ultimate Hershey chocolate chip cookie. Why are we so dark on that? Because oh, oh. Oh, we man. like to eat food. We love to eat food. Town News says Pizza Hut's introducing a new crust for their mozzarella poppers pizza. The crust of the pizza is topped with mini mozzarella cheese sticks. <laughs> Feel your heart just sort of pumping. <laughs> the Impulsive Buy website says hot tamale flavored peep marshmallows have hit store shelves ahead of Easter. Oh All right, investing.com says sales of Popeye's chicken restaurants surged by 34% last quarter because yep. of that doggone chicken sandwich. Yep. Kaboom says Popeye is celebrating Valentine's Day by offering red velvet cake cupcakes. Each one sells for $2.49. <laughs> Simple Moves claims Red Bull has launched a zero-calorie, zero-sugar energy drink called Red Bull Zero. It contains 80 grams of caffeine, which is the same as a cup of coffee. One can cost uh, $2.50. The Wish Magazine says Ben & Jerry's is releasing a new flavor called Peanut Butter Banana Split. It contains chocolate and banana ice creams along with mini peanut butter cups. Why are we so doggone fat? Because Dunkin' Donuts is releasing a new line of candy bars inspired by their coffee flavors. Flavors include caramel, French vanilla, and original blend. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are 18 reasons why we are the fattest nation in the world. Thank you very much. That's great. I, it's it, thanks, Weird Al. Hey, guess what? <laughs> we 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 uh, we have to go away now. So. So, Mr. Slade, you have to say bye bye. I don't wanna. Bye bye. Bye, Bye, Mr. Slade. Bye bye, Mr. (laughs) Bazaar. I've never heard this part of this song. <laughs> Very mellow, do we?
Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And, and this, this is, is the Slade, Slade Mason, Mason Show. Show. Come and listen to a story about a man in J.D. <laughs> Bye. Bye.